If you've been on the internet in the last couple of months, especially if you've been looking up news about the Nexus 6 or Android 5.0 Lollipop, then you may have encountered the term material design and found yourself wondering what the devil does that even mean? In a nutshell, it's a new visual and interactive design concept from Google that, contrary to how you might initially interpret it, has nothing to do with this. And isn't really what I thought it would be either. I thought it would be like some kind of philosophy where everything needed to look like a, a real world material, like uh, titanium and trees. Or, no, it's not that at all. Instead, material is more like this hypothetical material <laughs> out of which all the UI elements, buttons, icons, and themes are constructed. And constructed is key here because material, and I'm going to keep finger quote saying that, must behave according to a number of guidelines set out in Google's Material Design Spec Sheet, a living document that was created to guide artists to make a more unified look for Lollipop and presumably other Google products in the future. All right then, Linus, so what are these guidelines, you say? Well, first, much like construction paper, material can come in many different shapes when you look at it head on. But while it's almost flat, it is solid, so it does have a little bit of depth to it. All material is exactly 1 dp thick, even when content is displayed on top of it, which is not the same as 1 pixel thick, by the way, to allow for a consistent appearance on high and low resolution displays. Now, because material has that depth, some more rules apply. While it can change shape, grow, shrink, and be moved and rotated along any axis, it's solid, so you can't click or see through it. Two pieces can can't occupy the same space at the same time in the same way that my hands can't occupy the same space at the same time. One must be above the other, and it can't pass through other material. It also can't bend or fold. All right, Linus, this is starting to sound like a bunch of arbitrary hipster design crap to me. Why does any of this matter? Well, believe it or not, design philosophies like this matter more than you'd think because material design extends much further than just rules for what app layouts and buttons look like. It's a whole set of guidelines for how we interact with our devices, including things like realistic movement animations, which, combined with other techniques for drawing the user's eye to the correct part of the screen, enables more natural interaction. There are also color suggestions, so every app on your phone or tablet can have its own unique visual identity, yet be part of a greater whole, and even advice for developers about how to make sure their product is accessible for users with disabilities. So while while I unfortunately cannot stand here and go into as much depth as I could on a topic like this, I hope it was enough to explain the importance of material design as a toolkit for app developers to help make the Android ecosystem feel well, like just that, more of an ecosystem as opposed to an eclectic collection of random functionalities all bolted together and then stuck into your pocket. Speaking of an eclectic collection, lynda.com is the sponsor of today's episode. They have thousands of online courses available in a wide variety of subjects from business to photography to music production to development. A quick search for material design unfortunately didn't come up with anything today, but as it becomes more of a standard, I'm sure they will add some great instructional content about it or even integrate it into some of their other courses because their library grows with new courses every week and every course is taught by an industry expert so you can rest assured that you're not just listening to some actor read from a script these are people from the field with real up-to-date knowledge unlike that tech quickie guy hey who put that in there no i'm just kidding guys plans start at a very reasonable 25 dollars per month but if you use our link in the video description to sign up that's lynda.com slash tech quickie you will get a free seven day trial to test out their service and see just how much you could benefit from it before you pull the trigger. So head over to lynda.com today and figure out what you want to learn. Thank you for watching this video. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment letting me know if your feelings were more complicated than this or if you have suggestions for future Fastest Possible episodes. We really do read them. Thanks again for watching and as always, don't forget to subscribe.